Hi, welcome back to Quantum Programming with Circ. I'm Abe. And I'm Catherine. This episode follows up with our previous one on building quantum circuits in Circ. In that episode, we learned how to construct quantum circuits out of moments, with each moment containing operations on qubits. These operations themselves are made up of various gates, and in this episode, we'll learn how to create our own custom gates in addition to the ones that are installed when we get Circ installed in our system. Could you tell us a bit more about why we would want to do this? Sure, that's a very good question, and maybe let me give you one example. Let's say there's a series of gates that appears repeatedly throughout your quantum circuit. For example, you might have the same set of gates, but they appear between different sets of qubits. Wouldn't it be convenient if you could just wrap up those repeating set of gates into one and then apply that one gate to different sets of qubits? Yes, that would make building a quantum circuit much simpler. Right, and, and that's just one reason why we might want to do this. And in this episode, we'll cover three different ways and go through each of these and how we define our own gate for each of these cases. Let's get started. All right, so as always, we'll get started by opening up Colab. If you haven't watched episode one yet, there we showed you how to quickly set up Circ in Colab, and I encourage you to watch that episode. I'll assume you've done this already, but just, just as a quick reminder, you just browse to Colab and run pip install circ to get circ set up. And remember that you can do this in quiet mode if you don't want to see the outputs of the installation by saying pip install minus minus quiet instead. You can then check that circ is installed successfully by saying import circ and seeing that there are no error messages that come out. Sounds good. All right, before we go through the different ways, let me just show you a few examples of gates in Circ. You might recall that the action of gates on qubits is generally to apply a unitary matrix. Catherine, can you tell us the matrix that corresponds to the H gate? Sure, we have a coefficient of one over square root of two, and then one, 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 minus one. That's exactly right. But let's say you don't remember that and you want to find out how you can recall this using circ. You can see this in code by saying circ dot unitary and then pass in the gate that you're interested in finding out its matrix. So you can say circ dot unitary and then maybe circ dot h and it, you get exactly the same matrix that Catherine just mentioned. Of course, you can do this for other gates as well. For example, I can say circ.unitary and then circ.x, and that gives us the matrix for the x gate. And this is actually useful because you can remind yourself of some identity. So for example, s gate to the power of 0.5 is actually equal to a t gate. And you can convince yourself of this by saying circ.s to the power of 0.5 and ask what the unitary matrix is corresponding to that. And then you can also ask what the unitary matrix is corresponding to a T gate by saying circ.unitary circ.t. And you see you get the same matrices for both of them. And you can even do this for gates that need parameters. So for example, if you wanted to know the matrix corresponding to a Z rotation of 90 degrees, you can import numpy to get that pi and then say import numpy as mp and then ask for the unitary corresponding to circ.rz np.pi over 2. And that gives you the matrix that you're looking for. So as a quick reminder, you can find the list of gates that come with circ by going to our documentation, browsing to the build tab and clicking on the gates and operations section. All right, so now that we've gone through this, let's build our own gates. To do this, we'll use the same code and make small changes to it. So let me write down that code for you. So I'm going to say class myGate, which inherits from circ.gate, has three methods in it. The first one is called init. The second one is called numqubits. And the third one is called circuit diagram info. And all of these have different things within them and we'll have one additional one to put information into. And the most important part to remember is that this is inheriting from circ's gate. Numqubits defines how many qubits this gate will act on and circuit diagram info will define how this shows up when we print out our circuits. 
And then depending on how we want to create our gates, we can add bits and pieces to this fragment of code. So that's what we'll be doing throughout the rest of this exercise. Okay, let's say we want to build a gate whose matrix we already know. Let's say that gate wasn't defined in circ. To create this, I'll start with that same code. So I'll copy it here and then paste it here. And then I'm defining a gate that acts only on one qubit. So I'll leave num qubits to return one. And I'm okay with the label being my gate for now. So I'll leave that. And also I'll also leave my gate in the circuit diagram info because we'll see that in the printouts. And then this is the new bit of information. I'll add a method called unitary and I'll have it return exactly the matrix that I have in mind. Could you show us how you would use this gate in a circuit? Sure. So just like how you do this with any other gate, for example, let's build this circuit uh, from scratch and use the gate that we just created. So I'll say my gate is an instance of the gate that I just created. I'll create a qubit called my qubit. I'll create an empty circuit called my circuit. And in that circuit, I'll apply, let's say, a Hadamard gate onto that qubit and also that newly defined gate called my gate onto the qubit. And you see, if I print the circuit by saying print my circuit, you see that the label that we created in the, in the description of the gate shows up in that circuit. Let's explain what happens if we had multiple qubits. Ah, oh, okay, that's a very good point. In that case, we'd go back and first of all, set num qubits to be whatever that number of qubits is. We would change circuit diagram info to return not just one label like we had in this example, but multiple labels for each of the qubits so that it shows up in the circuit diagram. And of course, we'd now define the matrix to be appropriate for the number of qubits that we're interested in. And I think this will become clear in this next example too, where we'll show you a two qubit gate. Okay, so we just saw how to build a custom gate if we know it's unitary matrix. Let's show a second way now for building a gate. You've seen gates like the one we did earlier with Z rotation of some defined amount. That gate takes in a parameter which defines the rotation angle. You can build a gate whose unitary matrix you know and depends on some set of parameters in a similar way to what we just saw. Exactly. So again, just like before, I'll copy that fragment of code as a starting point. And then, as we mentioned, we're now about to do a two qubit gate. So I'll update num qubits to return two. And then I'll change the circuit diagram info to return two labels. This time I'll call the two labels control and target. And then finally define the parameter that I'm interested in. So the way to do that is by inserting a parameter called k in init and then saying self.k is equal to that k value. And then I'll add a method called unitary, just like before, which will return a matrix, except this time, because I have a matrix for two qubits in mind, it's going to be a four by four matrix. This matrix is basically a controlled Z rotation of some angle, and that angle is defined by the parameter K. So here we have two pi, one I, two to the power of that value K. Let's have a look now at how this gate shows up in a circuit when you draw it. Sure, so I'm going to use this gate in a circuit by saying, I want an instance of my gate for the case of K equals one. And then I'm going to create qubits by saying circ.linequbit.range2 because I want two qubits. And then create a circuit that applies my gate onto those two qubits. And then if I print that circuit by saying print my circuit, as promised, now you see the labels on both qubits. And if I ask circ what the unitary matrix is corresponding to that circuit, 
you see it's exactly the matrix corresponding to a controlled Z rotation with all places looking like identity except the last one where we have minus one because we set the component here to be an exponent of pi times i. Now I want to show you one last way to build your own gate. We started discussing this earlier. Now imagine you had a series of gates and they appear repeatedly in your circuit on different qubits. And you want to package them all into one gate for simplicity. A good example of this is a swap gate between two qubits, which is implemented using three C0 gates. If you have multiple swap gates in your circuit, then instead of defining three C0 every time, you can instead just use CERC's gate called swap. Abe, can you show us how we do this in CERC? Yeah, sure. So just like before, again, we're going to start by copying that fragment of code. And I will make some changes here. So first things first, I want this to act on two qubits. So I'll change the return on num qubits to two. Then I'll change the circuit diagram info to label these two qubits as Q1 and Q2. And then I'll define a new method that you haven't seen before called decompose. And this decompose takes in the number of qubits. So what we'll do here is first write down the qubits to be Q1 and Q2 from that argument. And then I'm going to return a list of operations. And that list of operations is going to be C0 in one order, C0 in a reverse order, and then C0 in that first order again. And then next, I can show you how I would use it in a circuit. I can say, again, create a new version of that gate, and then create two qubits, and then apply that gate to the two qubits. And if I print the circuit, you see exactly the labels that I've described. And if I ask what the unitary is that corresponds to that circuit, I can say, and you see this exactly corresponds to the matrix for the swap gate with one and one here and one and one here. All right, so just to quickly recap, we saw how to create our own gates in three different ways today. First, by defining the unitary matrix, then by creating parameters for that unitary matrix, if there are any. And finally, by saying that already predefined gates can be wrapped up to make up a custom gate of our own. Are there other methods to build our own gates which we should mention? That's right. Beyond the ones I just shared, we might, for example, be interested in building gates for qubits instead of qubits. Qubits are, of course, multi-level systems instead of two-level systems that are qubits. And I would encourage our viewers to visit our documentation page by going to the CERC documentation, browsing to the Build tab, and then going to the section on Building Custom Gates. In the next episodes, we will cover how to take the circuits that we've been building here and simulate them in various different ways. Bye. Bye.